Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be working on our very first Sega console. The console in question, of course, is the Sega Dreamcast and we're gonna be recapping the power supply. That way we can ensure many more years of continued functionality for this console. So without further ado, let's begin. The Sega logo gets its own spot up there for this video because it's the inaugural video for our Sega. All right, so I've already taken the liberty of unscrewing the majority of the screws for this console. Before we start working on the console, let's power it on and make sure it functions. That looks like it's working, so we'll go ahead and power it off. And of course, the console has already been prepped for this particular video. Uh, we're gonna leave everything in here. The one thing that we're not gonna leave in here is of course the power supply. Now this thing is gonna have a little bit of juice, so we will be discharging it in a moment. And we'll be using our discharging tool, which is this right here. Let's see, we wanna try and do it on the giant filter cap. So that's gonna be this right here. I'm actually kind of surprised there isn't any juice in this thing. Let's go ahead and discharge these right here, which I'm assuming would be standby. No juice, nothing, nothing. And we do have a couple more capacitors right over here. Appears like there's no residual energy, which is uh, quite the surprise. All right, I think it's safe to say we can start working on this power supply. I have a console five capacitor kit, and these are the capacitors we'll be using today. And in case you're wondering, the manufacturer of this power supply is Mitsumi Electric Company. And the power supply version number is 171796-2A. And of course the power supply capacitor kit that we purchased. So if you take a look here, we have 171796-2A and we have 7962, which means that this capacitor kit will handle this version power supply. So first capacitor we're gonna remove is this giant one right here. And I have already preset my soldering iron to 350C. However, if we need to lower it down, we'll probably lower it down to 330C. I'm using a T15 D24 soldering iron tip with our Hako FX951, which apparently is now discontinued by Hako. One side has already somewhat come out. Now we have this side right here. All right, and look at that. Apparently it was leaking, and yet the console is still functional. All right, let's go ahead and check out the capacitance and the ESR for this leaky capacitor. See if it actually detects it as leaking. Highly doubt it, but we'll see. So 106.7 UF, and the ESR is 0 0.22. The capacitance on this capacitor is actually supposed to be 100 UF, so it's actually still within spec and it's 200 volts. However, it's leaking, so it is time to replace it. So take a look at that right there. It's definitely leaking. And that was a 200 volt, 100 UF, 200 volt, 100 UF. The area that it was residing in does have a little bit of electrolytic fluid. Probably wanna clean that up with some alcohol. That way it doesn't start corroding anything. That should be good enough. We'll of course clean up this area of the residual solder. That way we can pass the new capacitor through. It's looking like we're gonna have a little bit of problems clearing these holes. Well, that one cleaned up just fine. I guess we're gonna have to use our dental tool. So we'll go ahead and slide on this new capacitor through. It does look like we get our markings as for the orientation of the capacitor. If you take a look there, you can see negative is on the left-hand side. And if you take a look at the other capacitors on the board, it has negative down there at the bottom. And they're both facing each other. This one also has negative and negative and negative. So that's how you can tell the orientation in case you lose track. And we just fold over these legs like that. And it's just temporary. Now we're gonna wanna tackle these three in the center right here. Of course, this area is a little bit more cramped. We'll remove this one that's off at the corner. Now this is probably where it would pay to use that spatula tip. All right, it still came out. And this one was also leaking. It's quite the surprise. 
and that's going to be a 10 volt 3300 UF. So let's check out the capacitance and the ESR on the capacitor we just removed. So it's 3486 UF and 0 0.16 ESR. So it's definitely still functional even though it's leaking. I mean clearly because the console wouldn't have booted up. Let's clear out these solder pads. Looks like the majority of the solder was actually cleared out of these already. It was leaking so I guess we can, we'll want to clean that up a little bit before we progress. And of course make sure you're paying attention to that polarity. And just fold over the legs. And we have two more in this vicinity to take care of. And we finally have a capacitor that was not leaking. Let's go ahead and check out the capacitance and the ESR on it, just for the heck of it. 2245, 0.13 ohms for the ESR. So this capacitor is also still in decent shape. And this is a 10 volt 2200. We have a 10 volt 2200 right here to replace it with. First, let's clear up these solder holes. And of course our polarity is right there. Or if you recall, both of them were pointing at each other for the polarity of negative. And we have one more in this area to take care of, which is right here. All right, came out. It looks like it could have been leaking, but it's difficult to tell. I don't think it was. And the capacitance in ESR, 452.9, 0 0.14 ohms. And this one's supposed to be a 470. So it was a little bit below what it should be, but I think that's within the 20% tolerance. This is a 35470. And we have a 35470 right here to replace it with. Let's clear out that old solder. Fold over your leads. Now we have three more. We'll start off by replacing the larger capacitor that resides towards the end of the board over here. All right, and this one doesn't look like it was leaking either. Check out the capacitance and the ESR. 1113 and 10, or 0.10 ESR. And this capacitor is supposed to be a 10 volt 1000 UF, and it's within spec. So we're looking for a 10 volt 1000 right here. And we first need to clean up the pads, that way we can run the legs through. And that should be good enough. This was already kind of cleaned up, so don't really need to do too much there. And we have our negative on this side. All right, and we have two more to go. We'll go for that center one. It's maybe a little bit difficult to pull that through while getting it in camera frame. I guess it's time to bring out the pliers. All right, it's like a tooth just came right out of there. And we'll check out that ESR and capacitance, 569. 0.16 for the ESR and it's supposed to be a 10 volt 470 UF so it's definitely doing great and the capacitor was not leaking and it looks like we can run this thing through and there we go it's a much smaller capacitor so it's definitely a little bit easier to work with in this area which is already kind of cramped as uh, you were saying we have one final capacitor to remove and there we are this one was leaking. You can see it just barely, but it was leaking. And our ESR and capacitance, 484 UF, a 0 0.34 ESR. I think this is supposed to be a 470 10 volt or 470 16 volt, so it's within spec. And of course, we'll be replacing it with a 16 volt 470 UF. And let's go ahead and place our replacement in here. We have one capacitor left, which I assume is for one of the variants of this power supply. No, we actually have one more capacitor to replace. All right, so that's gonna be right here. Whoops. Slipped a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and clear out the solder points. All right, and now this one right here. Pretty sure we'd be able to run the capacitor through, but I'm just gonna clear it out anyway with a dental tool. All right, and then this one was supposed to be a 35 volt, 47 UF. It's like our capacitance tester messed up one of its legs. 46.38 UF, 1.46 ESR, and it wasn't leaking. And this one right here, it looks like the negative goes on this side right here. Now we can go ahead and solder up all these legs. We'll start with the filter cap over here on this side. Now 
now we're going to have a mess of capacitors to work on. Almost looks like too much solder on a couple of these. And I believe this is the final one to solder up. Let's go ahead and cut the leads off. We'll start with this larger one over here. And you want to do your best not to apply any force to these areas because then you could tear the trace. That's it. Let's go ahead and clean up the residual flux with some alcohol. And we'll of course be using our standard toothbrush for this. And one thing I advise at this point is to make sure that your polarity is correct on all the capacitors before you plug it in and power up the console. So that one is good right here, and that one is also good. Negative this side, negative this side, negative this side, negative here, negative here, and negative right here. And visually, all the solder joints look decent. Nothing looks like it's bridging. So let's go ahead and put it back in the console. All right, and that goes just like that. Don't need to, but we'll put the shell on. That looks like it's powering on. Of course, we don't have a good battery in there. Now we'll see what else is in store for the Dreamcast. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time. Oof. The controls on this were not the greatest.